I resent that deeply. Someone dismissing my invocation of the African-American sojourn as that of my people by saying, grow up, it's over, race is over, let's move on. Whatever, move on to the next question. It's from Patrick. In response to questions about uh, colorblind society, yes. That's where I felt we were headed as I grew up, born in 1976. But we foolishly moved away from the idea. I think anyone who has been around for long enough knows that we were better off before. Being totally colorblind is as impossible as not noticing gender, but the idea of treating everyone with the same respect and dignity, giving everyone equal opportunity to prove themselves, is not a bridge too far. This realization of King's dream felt within reach in the not so distant past. Uh, that's Patrick's question. Uh, it uh, may have been prompted to some degree by some discussion that you and I have had, John, here about uh, Coleman Hughes's uh, new book, mm -hmm. uh, The End of Race Politics, Arguments for a Colorblind America, in which he very uh, passionately and forcefully advocates for colorblindness. I have some sympathy, a great deal of sympathy for the sentiment that Patrick is expressing we should be trying to move beyond race. We should be putting this categorization of racial difference behind ourselves. We should hope that African-Americans would not be as insular and distinct a demographic group within the American uh, social landscape 50 or 100 years from now as we are today, and so on. I, I have more than a little bit of sympathy for that. We should not define ourselves by our racial identity. Uh, we, we should be ecumenical and, and capacious in our embrace of others who, who don't share it, both at the personal and professional uh, levels. Um, we should wear our racial uh, garment lightly, not so heavily that it encumbers us and prevents us from being able to grow or distorts our interactions with other persons or colors the way in which we interpret everything that we experience in our lives. I agree with all of that. Still, and I won't go long, John, I'm concerned about the fetishization of color blindness uh, and about the lack of precision in the spheres of human activity to which it's supposed to apply. So, for example, does it mean that my children shouldn't be taught to revere their Black ancestors and the struggle of Black people, their people, for uh, equal citizenship in this great republic. Uh, is it a matter of irrelevance and indifference that they are the descendants of slaves here now, a uh, century and a half beyond the emancipation? Um, do we... Uh, experience American society in part through the lens of the struggles of our people. Uh, what are the narratives that we uh, embrace that are uh, a part of how we tell of our, uh, our, our ascendance uh, in American society? I, I don't want to give that up. Um, and uh, I sense no boundary on the colorblindness fetish from many of its advocates, including Coleman, frankly. Um, and that troubles me. I don't have a problem with identity when held lightly, but what worries me about the black identity is that too often, and I've said this before on the show, all of it is centered around making things easier. And I don't like the lack of challenge. I don't like the idea that blackness is not getting the precise answer. Blackness is being spiritual rather than intellectual. Frankly, you know, beyond a certain point, identity is warm and gratifying and easy. Humanism is a challenge. Big surprise that black people are so often encouraged to embrace the identity. It is a diminishment when administered more than a dollop at a time. That's how I feel. So you don't mind black identity, but you object to the way in which it's invoked sometimes. Yeah, it it essentializes. Too often that identity is used as an excuse from having to 
make effort, both in terms of, say, scholarly work and on various other things, as in, as in also how you conceive of yourself. To be tribal is how we were born as humans. Humanism, transhumanism is an effort. I don't want us to be exempt from that. And we shouldn't have to be Kwame Anthony Appiah, you know, from Ghana, et cetera, to speak up about this sort of thing. People like Keith Ellison should speak up about this sort of thing. And people, you know, who grew up in the United States of America. And um, so, yeah, I'm, a, I'm of two minds on it. But I am not as much a partisan of color blindness as many people would think. Coleman and Camille push me on that. that Thomas as well. Partly maybe because Sheena. I'm 58. Yeah, I, I can only go so far on it. I'm working on it because I know that it's what the future has to be, but I have a very hard time applying it in the present tense. I'm given to saying sometimes the reason I'm so passionate about these issues of race that I talk about from a conservative perspective is because I'm struggling for the soul of my people, I say. I grew up on the south side of Chicago. Everybody in my world as a formative young man, until I went to college at Northwestern University, pretty much everybody, uh, except the pharmacist when I'd go up and fill a prescription or, you know, whatever, was black. South side of Chicago, 1950s, 1960s. These were my people. The food, the rhythms, the music, the laughter. It, I, I experience it as a black person. That's how I narrate my life. Now, I'm in my 70s. You know, time goes by, things change, and things are changing for sure. Um, and I wonder if it is even coherent for me to say to someone like the 20-something Coleman Hughes, African-Americans are my people. I wonder if he would even know what I was talking about. Am I in, deluded? Am I deluded to narrate my life in part through a racial lens? Uh, because if I do narrate my life in part through a racial lens, it's going to color, if you will, how it is that I interact with other people. So when I choose a mate, for example, I may give preference to someone who also narrates their lives in terms of roughly the same set of categories, experiences, and narratives as I do. Am I now a racist? Have I, am I immature? Have I simply not had the scales fall from my eyes yet and I still act in a deluded fashion under uh, the sway of a fictive identity? I resent that deeply. Someone dismissing my invocation of the African-American sojourn as that of my people by saying, grow up, it's over, race is over, let's move on. 